Well, good morning. Looks like only a few of us survived Christmas. Let's pray. Lord, once again, we thank you for the privilege of coming before your, your presence, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've told us to enter boldly into your presence, Lord. So we come today worshiping you and thanking you for all your goodness as we continue to celebrate this season, remembering your advent, Lord. We just praise you. We thank you again for your wonderful plan. And we pray that you come inhabit our praises this morning. Fill this place with your presence. For those that are watching at home, fill their living rooms or their dens or wherever they are with your presence, Lord. Come and meet with your people. Be glorified in this place and in all the places where we worship you this morning, Lord. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me do this first. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lowly exile here, unto Oh, 
worship you. You are here working in this place. And I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, you are here, moving in this place, and I worship you, I worship you, you are
Now you could say this has been a challenging year. You know, with the pandemic that we've all endured, you know, there's only, in our state, there's only about 4% of the people that have been infected, 4% of our population in the state of Maryland. But 100% of the population has been affected. The riots we saw earlier in the year, to say the least, a very contentious election season. It's been a rough year. But here it is, the last Sunday of 2020. And we're still here standing, worshiping the Lord. Somehow we've made it through. We can see some light at the end of the tunnel, but we're not out of the tunnel. But we're still here worshiping God. He hasn't changed one bit. He hasn't stepped down from his throne. But most importantly of all, he hasn't forget, forgotten about us. He's just as faithful, just as true to his word as he's ever been. We praise you for that, Lord. We praise you for that this morning. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Let's sing that again I love you Your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God all my life. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through fire in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God yes, Lord. all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, who oh, I will sing for the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life. You have been so, 
with my life to lay down. I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. In 2020, you have been faithful. In 2020, you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able in 2021, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing it again. In 2020, you have been faithful. In 2020, you have been so, so good. With every breath. I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. We'll continue singing your goodness, Lord, because you're always faithful. changes, Lord. You're always good. You're always faithful, Lord. So we just proclaim, Lord, that we will continue in the 2020, Lord, singing your goodness, Lord, for you're worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You may be seated this morning. <clears throat> As you can see on the screen behind me, this is a shared worship service. And interestingly, in the last 30 years of ministry, I've been a part of two churches uh, in those 30 years, um, both of which would have services that are a shared worship. Um, in the former church that I came from, where I was there for 11 and a half years, the last six and a half of it, as an associate pastor, we called it a 1 Corinthians 14, 26 service. And in this local church, it was called a shared worship service, so I didn't do anything to try to change the name of it. I thought that was a good, uh, a good name for it as well. But 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26 uh, Paul is giving instruction to the Corinthian church where he says that, that how is it then brethren, meaning brothers and sisters obviously, and he says that when you come together, you know, one has a tongue, one has an interpretation, one has a teaching, and, and the idea is that at least in some of the worship settings in the earliest church, there was a, a participation by many in the church and not just a select few. So that's really what this is based on. Yesterday, I, I went to the mailbox and I think it, it, it gave me the impression, and, and maybe this happened to you as well, but it seemed like the United States Postal Service said, you know what I'm gonna do to his Christmas cards? I'm gonna save them all up for December 26, because we got a mass we probably got more Christmas cards yesterday than we have up to Christmas Day. And one of those Christmas cards, um, uh, Christmas letters, excuse me, that was in a Christmas card, 
um, really kind of is a good segue for what we wanted for this shared worship service. And in this letter, uh, this person described how they were having a, a, a FaceTime uh, or Zoom, one of the two, uh, meeting with friends. In fact, there were three couples or, or three groups of, of friends or whatever that were getting together in three different states. And it was sort of, you know, maybe the beginning of COVID and it was just, you know, kind of like in, in his mind, he was c- kind of thinking about all the just the yuck of COVID-19. And before he shared, the first person to share said, hey, let's talk about how COVID-19 and everything that has taken place has been a blessing. Talk about how it's been a blessing to you this year. And that really is kind of the heart of this service as it's the last Sunday in the year 2020. Uh, We will kick off... uh, 2021 with Brian Sen bringing us the message, and then I'm going to do a sermon series on the subject of temptation, but we want this just to be a reflection of the year 2020. Do we have those questions that we came up? We came up with some questions to kind of, you know, spur your mind if you hadn't planned on sharing, or, and again, there's no, there's no uh, pressure to share or whatever, um, but Number one, what was an unexpected blessing from this past year? Because you cannot say with with everything that has happened in 2020 that there were no blessings. Secondly, what was a lesson learned from this past year? Wouldn't it be great to think back and say, what was one thing that God really showed me this year? Because I can promise you that what he showed you in 2020 is something also to carry that ball into 2021. Thirdly, how did you experience God in the midst of a world in crisis? And as Scott shared earlier, I mean, the pandemic wasn't the only crisis. There were riots. There's, you know, I don't even know if we're still done the election uh, because there's still, you know, talk and, and, and a lot of conflict over that. And then the last one is, did you have an unexpected ministry opportunity? And when we talk about ministry opportunity, we realize that all of us are ministers. All of us are ministers. My former pastor used to say, raise your hand if you're a minister. And then he would say these words, every one of you, if you know Jesus, should have your hand raised, right? Because that's, you know, we all have the responsibility of sharing the gospel and ministering to others in a variety of ways. Uh, So those are kind of four questions that we can springboard from. Uh, maybe you're here and, and you saw it in the email that we're having shared worship and you're already prepared. But at, at this point, what I'll do is uh, what I like to do on shared worship, and that is after giving the introduction to this is what it looks like to step back and receive. Do you want to hold it? Or? <laughs> oh, yeah, I could. So this week, Christmas week, um, is always crazy, and I feel like for generations, uh, mothers have carried the cross. Dads wake up Christmas morning and like, oh, you got that. <laughs> awesome. Um, so it's, it's hard, and it's messy, and um, I woke up early Wednesday, I think, and was in prayer and we want life to be clean, and we want grace to grow beautifully. And God grows us through trial. And so I was kind of thinking about Mary, and she's traveling, she's hugely pregnant. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> um, and she's traveling, and she's, she's by herself with her husband. So when she delivers her baby, there's no familiar midwife There's no one there um, other than her husband that she knows. There's really no preparation. And when it gets time to deliver her baby, she's in a barn. 
And we kind of think of Mary as this picture that you might see, but the reality is that she was a woman and she probably was having a cow that she was having her baby where the cows were. Who are we to say how God will make us holy? Who are we to think that it's gonna be all clean? And this year was messy and it was hard and we have lots of hard things that we walk through, but again, it was kind of a bombardment this year. And personally for me, uh, I had vertigo for two months with three littles and very pregnant also, and craziness and us learning how to do church like this, um, even still learning Christmas Eve was kind of not what we planned. Um, but we don't get to call how God makes us holy. And so with that renewed vision, I walked and I loaded the probably hundredth load of laundry for the week. And I was like, this, this is his holy ground. And there's a quote that says, um, to those that see every bush is a burning bush and all the ground we walk on is holy. So with renewed vision, I did my load of laundry and I encourage you in 2021, it's not gonna get easier. It's another cross to bear, another cross to pick up. But he's making us holy. He's working all things. Um, one of my favorite quotes comes from a Capuchin friar, Salinas Casey, who says, do not pray for easy lives. Pray to be stronger. Do not pray for tasks equal to your powers. Pray for powers equal to your tasks. Then the doing of your work shall be no miracle, but you shall be a miracle. Every day you shall wonder at yourself, at the richness of life which has come to you by the grace of God. And so we made a little video, um, a lot of pictures kind of gathered, and this is 2020 in review.
Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. You don't want to tell me lie. We are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Um, to go to answer the first question, what are some unexpected blessings from this year? First, I want to start by saying, so last Christmas, 2019, um, Beth had all the Fisher kids, <clears throat> excuse me, write down some requests that we wanted her to pray for 
in 2020, and we, we wrote them down, and we wrapped them up and put them in an envelope, and she didn't know what the requests were, but she put them in her prayer box, and she prayed for them all 2020, and then this past Christmas, or I'm sorry, like a few days ago, we opened them up from last year to see, uh, just to look over them and see how God had answered prayers um, that we, I don't know about everyone else, but I honestly had forgotten all about it. I'd forgotten all about the requests that I had made Christmas 2019, but two stuck, in particular, stuck out to me that God had answered in mighty ways and I hadn't even remembered making the requests. The first one was we had some friends who at the end of 2019 had a miscarriage. Um, We were devastated for them. They obviously were devastated. And so at Christmas I pray, or maybe it was New Year's, I had prayed that they would have a viable pregnancy in 2020 and they're now expecting their first baby in February which was a huge answer to prayer, and I had honestly totally forgotten that I had even made the request. And so to look back and see that God was, God knew even when I had forgotten about that request, and he answered mightily, and he said yes. The other one, that I, the other request I had made was that God would save my grandma. She's the only grandparent that I have, all my other grandparents died when I was really, really young. So she was the only grandparent I had left. Um, Well, my grandma actually died in October. um, And I thought that the answer to that request was no, that God, that she had not come to salvation. But after my grandma died, my mom told me that when, she, when my mom was a, a young girl, that she and my grandma had gone to church together. And to her knowledge, my grandma had accepted Christ. Later in life, she um, joined the Mormon church, but my mom, but you know, we believe that once saved, always saved. And so my mom said that to her knowledge, my mom had, my grandma had accepted Christ in her younger years. And even though she had strayed, my mom believes that my grandma is in heaven. And so when I opened that envelope again a few days ago and saw that I made the request for God to save my grandma, I realized that, first of all, God had already answered that prayer many years ago when my grandma came to him. But then in 2020, he specifically answered that prayer because he did save her. Uh, My grandma's been suffering from cancer for several years, and he saved her from her earthly suffering and took her home in 2020. And so to see two very important requests answered in a powerful and mighty way, even though it's honestly, I hadn't been praying for those all year, to my shame, I hadn't been praying for those regularly in 2020, but Beth had. Didn't even know specifically what the requests were, but God knew. Um, There's a song so I grew up really conservative, in case anyone doesn't know. Um, and so one, this one song that is specific to the community I grew up in, but very powerful, the song is called My Wordless Prayer. Um, and the chorus goes, Spirit, come and rest your ear upon my heart. Oh, come and hear my wordless prayer, my silent plea, and take it far away from me. Take it from this heart of mine to the Father's heart divine. Speak in words unknown to man that God may hear and understand. And that means a lot to me this year since, in a way, those prayers were wordless, but they were both answered very powerfully. So, you know, obviously, yes, 2020 has been a year of hardship, but it's also been a year of abundant and immeasurable blessing. And we got the green light, so we must be good to go. So starting over again, just, just again, thankful for the uh, safe delivery of our grandson, uh, Landon, in uh, Ohio. And we can give a little bit of a report on him. I'm sure you kind of keep up, uh, some of you know, uh, with Facebook and so forth. But just thankful for the people here who we know were praying um, through the delivery process. And just as, you know, he was, it was 32 weeks, he's still in the hospital. Uh, he was 36 weeks uh, on Thursday, so actually a month old uh, just just now. Um, we're just very thankful that there was really no complication of any sort, at least to this point. 
Um, he's just growing on a steady basis, and um, it's, it things just you know when you when you can t when you think about worrying and you know what what can happen and this and that, um, things have just gone really smoothly. Um, so you have to look at God's touch, and it's just was has really been there uh, upon Megan and Jordan and and Landon, and uh, so again we want to thank the church for. Um, for uh, lifting us up as a, as a complete family and uh, for the blessings that we've received there. So. Usually when I take my mask off, my earrings go flying and so does my glasses. So it's always a little dangerous. Um, yeah, we, would, we just want to thank everybody again for praying for Landon. His full name is Landon Taylor Gruel. And um, I just... I. I thought of Psalms 139, um, verse 13. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion. As I was woven together in the dark of the womb, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. I guess um, my prayer going forward is that he continue to thrive. He is up over five pounds now. He is in an open crib, praise God. Um, and the biggie, um, yesterday he had a big day. He had his first hep B shot, and he also was circumcised. So we're thinking that those are good signs that they are heading in the right direction. He still has a couple hurdles to overcome. He obviously needs to be feeding well. He um, did have one feed the other night where he didn't need anything through the tube you see in the pictures through his nose as NG tube. So I'm not sure. Megan is sparse with details. So the other prayer is continue praying for him, but please pray for us because this is really difficult for both of us, especially me. Probably I'm like a maniac um, to not be there. I have a grandson that's a month old and I've never seen him. And uh, the one thing it made me thankful for was the gift of our first and second grandchild, especially our first Cole, because we were there when Ben came out of the hospital room and said, Mom, Mom and Dad, it's a boy, they're okay, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we took that for granted. We thought every grandchild was going to be that way. And now we know it isn't that way. And, you know, friends of ours, Scott and Ellie, had a grandchild just recently. And although they've gotten to see him and hold him, they weren't there either um, because of COVID. So, you know, we have a different reality, and I hate it, um, to be honest with you. So keep praying for us because Megan has uh, told us we won't be able to see him until probably late March, early April. So um, he's going to be a totally different baby. Um, we're praying that her heart softens and she allows us to isolate and test and vaccinate or whatever the heck we need to do. Um, you know, I mean, we'll pretty much cartwheel to Ohio if we need to. But um, we just pray that her heart softens, but also pray for us as we deal with this long-term grandparenting or long, long-distance grandparenting. Um, and I think that's it. But he's, she finally is able to put him in some regular outfits, so he's looking like a, I don't want to say a real baby. He is a real baby. But he's looking like what we would expect a newborn to look like. So that's very exciting, and he's getting more beautiful every day and filling out. So that's, God has really touched them and, and Megan has just been amazing through all of this because she just goes one day at a time. And I know that's probably what she has to do. But she's not looking at when are we getting out of the, you know, when are we going to break out of this joint? She's just doing what she needs to do every day and holding that baby for hours and hours on end. And I know that's been part of the success of, of um, him along with God's touch. So thank you for your prayers. Continue to pray for Landon Taylor and um, for Megan and Jordan and for safety on the road as they travel. So that's it. Thank you. Amen. I wasn't really planning on doing this. Um, 
But as I was sitting here and looking at um, the questions, the prompts that Tim had for us, um, I was holding my book that I started uh, a little bit more than a month ago. Um, unlike you, this year was just hard. Um, and it still is in a lot of different ways. I told Tim I didn't even want to do this because I don't want it to be videoed and I don't even want it to go out because it feels really vulnerable to share and not even know who you're sharing to, to talk and not even know if anyone is listening. But maybe this will help someone because it has helped me. Um, but right before Thanksgiving, it was just hard. And I felt like God invited me into um, keeping a list of all my gratitudes. And, and so I started out and I was like, I can do this. Like, and I felt like, this is so awesome. This is right before Thanksgiving. I want to give Jesus for his birthday a thousand gratitudes from my heart. And so I found this little book um, that I had gotten a while ago. And um, I started writing my gratitudes. And at the very first page, I wrote from Psalms 40, verse 5, if I had to recite all of your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. And I've been writing and keeping my list, and I invited whosoever to join me. Um, and there was 13 others that walked with me in this journey of keeping a list, a running list of all God is doing. And it has been an amazing way to walk through Advent and to remember and to celebrate the goodness of God. And as I keep saying, even in the midst of so much hardship and so much difficulty that we all continue to experience. And I didn't make it to a thousand by Christmas. Um, I am currently on 888, but it started a practice for me and I felt like God showed me some type of connection between not just saying I'm thankful, but saying I'm thankful to Jesus, attaching my gratitude to him. And not just attaching my gratitude to him, but to write it down and to keep revisiting and to keep looking for more things. And my perspective is beginning to change. It's not completely there. I'm still very much rough around the edges, and, but that tether seems to be shorter and shorter to keep looking even in that hardship, what can I be thankful for? And so I'm finishing out the year and I will have more than a thousand by the time we celebrate the new year, but I wanna continue this and to continue writing my gratitudes to Jesus Christ because I cannot imagine doing life without him. And I cannot imagine doing life without any of you. I just can't, and I thank you for walking alongside, for being a part of the journey together. Um, I'm a people person, and I love people, and it's been hard. And so I just thank you um, for bearing with me, for bearing with me, and um, finding gratitudes to Jesus for so much that we have.
Anyone else that wanted to share? I don't want to end this if you had something you wanted to share. All right. I think it's been a great shared worship. And I, I think it's it's been a great time of looking back in the year 2020 and admitting our hardships and aches and everything we don't like about it, but then also remembering that God was there and that God is carrying us into 2021. Thank you so much. I imagine it's Brendan, George, and James that put that video together. Uh, but thank you very much. That was that was absolutely beautiful, and I think it was great to to look back. I think one of the things that we gained from 2020, even if things were to change immediately tomorrow, is that parking lot services are probably here to stay, and and they're going to be back by popular demand. So, um, thank you. Let's us stand before the Lord and. If you're able to take hold of the person beside you, would you please grab their hand and we'll pray this prayer together as we say goodbye to 2020 and look forward to 2021 to the God who is with us and carries us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Have a blessed week. Thank you for being here. I love you.